This one's doing really good. Yeah, it's this one here having a fit. It's not doing so good. This thing is an abortion. up one of the other times. Oh freaking mess. Fan blades coming off. Yeah, I think this might be a problem. I think we can wire tie that back on there. I don't know. Kind of actually if you think about it, it's more efficient. It spins really fast and this one can spin slower. There we go. So what I ended up doing was having to cut the hub off the shaft. It literally would not come off. So we're gonna have to order a new blade. I got down the road and it called me back. Said uh, this here was not working since three days ago. And uh, so they didn't turn it off though. So now we gotta see if we can figure out what's going on. I would say probably overheated and probably burned up the compressor. I gave it a slight touch and it's hotter and it's has six but two. And uh, between going that and going deaf from the drive through uh, speaker, uh, we'll have to see what we're gonna, uh, what we can do here. I think first thing we're gonna do is try to shut it down, see if we can find out if we can get into some of this stuff because they've kind of got the whole workbench up here. Let's see if we can get into some of the electronics. It's kind of a mess. All right, so. Looks like somebody jerry-rigged a capacitor in there already. Might be a three-in-one. Yeah, it's a three-in-one. This is a freaking nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. It's not very, yeah, it's a little warm. All right, thank you. Yeah. Could be low in charge, I suspect. You know what? I think it is low in charge. Yep, because it's starting to frost. You can feel the cold coming across here. Oh my. So it's running. It's just low on the refrigerant. Well, it's beyond need to replace, as you can tell. It's got the wrong thermostat in there because it don't have the defrost clock that I see, unless it's somewhere else. And the uh, poor condenser there is completely plugged. The customer at the drive-thru could hear himself. <laughs> He's like, it's loud in there. Like, you think? Yes, sir, it's loud. Well, let's see here, bud. I suppose we could put a tap there so you don't have to try to get into this garbage every time you want to get into it. That's what the guy that originally installed it should have probably done. But let's see if we can get these caps off here. I think I lied. It's not pumping. I want country gravy. And it's been down for two or three days and they didn't turn it off, so it's hotter than heck. And then I need a large uh, paper. Um, yeah. Should I stay or should I go now? An R12 or 502, so it's got R12 originally. This thing's like a spring chicken, man. Well, the coil's slightly dirty. They got all their mix in there. It's just a little podink little cooler. It's not very big. This is like uh, Freddy Krueger Nightmare on my street. Did find the uh, breaker. Let's see if we can figure out which one's what here. Look at the white versus whatever. I'll write it down. I'm gonna get maybe get Annie out, or I might just get the one I just took off the other cooler I just fixed. It's hard to remember this freaking cooler, so, or this compressor is so freaking hot, it's ridiculous. 
So white is star, common is black, and run is red. So just remember run is red, black is common like it usually is. So, good grief. You know what? We could actually, you know, yeah. We could have just hooked right on to the end of those. Wow. That is, that is some nice stuff right here. I would suspect this might be broke. It could be just bad. Let me, let me amp this thing good for it. It's half worse. It's the size of my other one is. I wonder if it went bad. There's your thermal disc. I'll get out And you can tell that puppy's been running hot. Come on, focus on my finger there. There you go. So you've got there we go. Thermal looks like it's been going off. Why you have insurance that covers any Yeah. Yeah, hard to say. So what you got there is you got the thermal disc here. That's your thermal for your, for your common. That's if it gets too many amps in it, it's going to shut it down there. This right here is your capacitor, and it's got a PTC, positive temperature coefficient. If you look right there, you can see your wires burnt to heck. So chances are, this thing is toasty critters. Hopefully we'll get lucky and we'll get able to throw another one of these little turds on there. We might be able to make this thing run another day. Supposedly they bought property for a new store, so everything's going to be jerry-rigged for now. Okay, so we are at 256 microfarad. I don't know, man. I don't think it's gonna run, but we could try. So what we're gonna do here is, I got my one that I just removed, three in one. Got this thing queued up, ready to go. Let's see if this thing will run. Maybe we could try out my Viper cleaner on this nasty looking coil. See if we can make this thing run. Yeah, there it is. See what happens. 8 point whatever amps. Pressures are starting to move. Sorta. Of. Pulling 8 amps. Is it moving refrigerant? It's not looking too promising there, Bubba. Not looking too promising. You might have just screwed yourself. Oh my gosh. That is hotter than all get out. I would say, oh wait a minute, did we open this up yet? I think, yeah, I did open it up, didn't I? I've gotten phone call after phone call while I'm trying to work, which makes everything nice and difficult. And then the good old five minute turn off there. Let's turn these back on. Yeah, I do not feel comfortable saying, hey, let's replace this compressor because... Can't hurt no down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we went out and grabbed Danny. We pulled up the compressor's information. It's supposed to be like 7 ohms on one leg. It ends up coming at 10. The other one's supposed to be 1.2. It's like 2, but it's hotter in hell, so the resistance is going to be higher. Verified which one was our start, which one's our run. Got her hooked up. going to see what we get here. You got our voltmeter in the top. Amp, uh, amp meter here on the left. So we're going to go past her in. We're going to go to run. So it's running, it's pumping, believe it or not, so maybe I had the things on backwards. Alright, I think I had the probes, or the uh, capacitor on backwards, because starts down there at the bottom, I think I put the run there, so it was running in reverse. Um, usually it's run and start, or maybe it's start to run, I don't remember. They didn't have the wiring thing inside the plastic thing, and I didn't check resistance, to be honest with you. Let's try this again with the other start capacitor. We're gonna leave this in here so you know that I'm not perfect. Got it back on there. 
got the Comet up top, the whites to the your right, and the reds to your left. I don't believe that's how it was, and I really don't feel like playing back the video. Today's not a very happy day. You know what? This is real life here. You know he's in a happy mood, so welcome to behind the scenes. Let's go here and see what happens. Look at that. So I did screw up. Thank baby Jesus there. Now let's see what happens with our, with our amp draw. 8.3, not bad. I think 7 was what the factory said it was supposed to be. Trips out at like 10 amps. So we might actually get by. When you pull up the specs on this compressor, it comes in as a 134A POE oil. This comes uh, on the display here, on the tag, it says alkaline benzene. Who knows? I'm gonna scrape the coil and then we're gonna spray some Viper cleaner in there. Thanks to my friends over at Refrigeration Technologies for sending that to me. I did a post on that a while back. We're gonna try it out, I've never tried it. Let's see how well it does on this greasy, nasty crap. One thing bad is, is it's gonna drip right down the front, but at this point, I think they'd rather the mix be cold. Uh, you can tell it's about in line for as warm as it is for the evaporator, but your condenser is awfully high. It's probably say 80 degrees in here. That's uh, about 60 degrees over ambient, which kind of sucks, but coming out nice and hot. Liquid's warm, definitely warm. Actually coming back fairly cold on the suction, so things are looking promising for what we got to work with here. Well, I've been running just a little while, it's starting to come down a little bit. Anyhow, this portion of the video is brought to you by Refrigeration Technologies Viper Coil Cleaner. Let's see how well it does here on this. I've never used their coil cleaner stuff before, so let's go ahead and shut this down. Let's see what we're gonna get out of this thing. It's dropped it a little bit. It's already came off of the 60 something. There we go. Let's see what this thing can do. Is it up to the height? Can it live the dream? Well, let's find out. There we go. Let's see if we get a little bit of this nasty stuff off the back. Wow. That crap turns into foam almost immediately. Holy crap. Wow. Holy crap, that stuff is like stupid crazy. Never seen one. It's got a really nice penetrating beam getting in there. That is nuts. Somebody played with their chemistry lab a little bit when they were a kid, didn't they? And it's really not making that bad of a mess. Keep shooting it in there, driving it into the coil. Yeah, well, it pulls that crap off. Let's see if it makes that come off. Things so nasty looking. Just for curiosity's sake, just to see what it can do. Is it coming in the backside a little bit? Not quite yet. Okay, we're gonna let that set for a touch. I mean, it says no rinse, which I don't know if I believe that. Nice thing, there is no odor, like it said. We've got some stuff, man. It's horrible. It, it makes the whole building smell like it's it's really bad. So let's see how this thing does here. Let her just eat and do its job. Now if we have to, we'll put down some rags or something and we'll suck it up with a vacuum or whatever. You could always use the porta blaster if we really, really wanted to. But then we just gonna make a bigger mess. This is just one of them units you can't do much. And when you've got the fryers right over there, you got an oven thing here, you're just asking for trouble. All right, so we use my little green brush right there just to get the big chunks off the top, and I just straightened it out a little bit, and that's what we're looking at right there. I used a little bit of water from that bottle. If I would have hit this thing with my high pressure sprayer, we would have gotten all clean. Problem is, here's all the more mess I've got. I mean, yeah, we got a little bit on the floor, but I'm gonna get that cleaned up with the mop come back here to the back side. That's really important. Watch out. See that? We got a nice airflow coming through now. So it, uh, it 
it's clean. It looks like hell still, but you can't you can't uh, beat something up for 30 years and then think it you know there's gonna be a miracle in a can. But I would say this is probably the closest thing to it, and I still got quite a bit left yet. So um, we're gonna see what kind of precious we get when we get done here. It brought it down quite a bit, but we'll know once we uh, once we dry off the coil here. Not too bad of a mess, honestly. Not for as bad as what we had going on. For the most part, it really didn't get into the cooler, just in a crack. Nobody likes it in the crack. Which, this is a good time to tell you guys, I now have my own promo code, Survival, at True Tech Tools. So if you guys uh, use that at your checkout, Survival, just like you see it in the title of my name, you'll get 8% off at True Tech Tools, which they stock all the refrigeration technology stuff along with all the kind of cool tools that I like to use every day. Um, I'll have links down below for pretty much all my normal stuff. This is something I just put together, so it's uh, not completely... Still got to finish putting uh, links together and stuff like that, but the uh, promo code, or the discount code I should call it, will work. Uh, I've already tested that out. But if you want to support the channel and you like the videos and you don't want to spend nothing out of your pocket, use that. We've dropped from 140 something to where we are now. It's pretty dry, everything's cleaned up. Cooler's about 52 degrees area. Looking pretty decent. I'm gonna go ahead and dump this uh, from my hoses back in there. It's probably slightly overcharged, but it surprised me. Finished cleaning up our mess here. I've got the original start components being ordered straight from Copeland. We'll get those put on there. Um, the coils uh, on the evaporator aren't the greatest, but uh, it's Friday and I'm on call and I don't have time to screw with it. We could always get that on the next trip back if they even want to. What we did earlier when we were here, this old beast, like I said, uh, I gotta get the shaft size of that thing because I don't know what it is. I thought it was quarter inch, but they wanted to know if it's 516, so I gotta measure it. Handy dandy caliper here, so let's take a look and see. We're gonna add a little filter media to this thing just because there's so much crap in the air. Uh, like I told the owner, we're getting new uh, controls for it. It's still really hot on top. It's uh, it's getting cooling back, but you know it's a fixed cap tube. It's not uh, getting crap loads back, but I don't want to push anything any higher. Push, push. So we're gonna get one more piece on that over there. All right, guys. So we're back again. Shady's back. So I've got the compressor relay and stuff replaced. Got the OEM M ones in there. They didn't get me the exact capacitor, and unfortunately, there's no place to mount it. Everything's broke here, and so anyhow, it's taped up. It's not the way I like it, but I mean, it's got it as good as I can. There ain't nothing gonna get. No one's gonna get shocked on anything not the way I like it but it's not going anywhere you see what I'm saying here it's completely sealed up but we got the new uh, factory OEM relay on there and the overload replaced it is running it's been holding temperature even with that cheaper three-in-one which I don't even know if that's accurate I got to check it with my regular thermometer but that's, that's about the only thing I care to use these for is just to get them by until I get the OEM stuff. Had too many of the them things there just bite you in the butt. So anyhow, that's done. Now all we got to do is get the fan in there. Unfortunately, the uh, fan blade I hornswoggled there ain't the one I need. I need a Fasco blade. I ended up coming back. They decided not to use it which was good, so I ended up digging this fan out, got the numbers off of it, which I should have probably done the first time. You can see it's a FASCO number from what I'm finding out online. I'm just gonna leave this thing like this, that way they don't run it. They see that, they're gonna be like, nah, I can't do nothing. Also taped off the breaker so that they wouldn't run it. 
All right, guys, like I said, that's gonna wrap that one up. That was kind of a pain in the butt job. And you know, sometimes we get in bad moods and we just don't really feel like talking. We don't feel like explaining a lot. We just show you what we're doing, we get it done. It's not always pretty, it's not always perfect, but the job is finished and it's working and they're gonna get by in which I made my point pretty clear that, you know, you're dang lucky I have my magic wand with me because having that down for over a day or two was not a good idea. So, you know, they could have lost uh, a lot of uh, ice cream mix, which uh, I think it's about $50, 50 bucks a case, I think, something like that, maybe more. I definitely want to give a shout out to Refrigeration Technologies. I appreciate them sending that to me. So I did get my office to order some uh, from our supply house, which they put it on the back shelf, which is just absolutely asinine. Uh, we use the other brand quite a bit. I don't know if it's cheaper or what, and I really like uh, the way that stuff foamed. Usually that foaming action is a joke and it doesn't really work, but here it really did. So it did a pretty good job. It would have done a lot better if I could have rinsed it out with a power washer, my little uh, Porta Blaster. It would have done uh, would have done really nice. It would have knocked it all right out, but then it would have dripped all the way down the front even worse than what it did. If you guys enjoyed the video, if you would, please give it a thumbs up. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one.